Today we're talking about that new WVD feature, Start VM on Connect. The PowerShell experience just became available in preview, but in this episode I'm going to show you how to set everything up and what it all does, as well as the new Azure Portal experience that'll be coming soon. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. And the idea for this, of course, comes from saving money in the cloud and giving users the ability to start VMs when they need them without giving away all of the Azure permissions that you need to keep safe and secure. And the conflict here has been that you, as the administrator, want that VM turned off if it's not being used so you can save money, but the user still needs access to it whenever they need. And this is especially true in personal desktops, which are one of the three scenarios around WVD today, because it's a one-to-one -one relationship, one user to one VM. And that may have meant that they would have called the help desk and said, please turn on my VM, which is a big inconvenience to the user. Or we did a video like this in the past using an Azure Power app where the user could be given an application that they could start and stop their VM when they wanted. But now with Start VM on Connect, this is baked right into the WVD service. And the way that this basically works is you as the administrator still get to decide the basic schedule for the VM. But now the user gets to turn on the VM whenever they need it, even outside those business hours without having to contact anybody. When they go to log on, the service will see that their VM is turned off and it will turn it back on for them. They can log in, do what they need to do, and everyone's happy. Okay, so that's gonna get our VMs turned on and the users are happy, but what about saving money? How do I get the VM to turn off? Now there's nothing that is part of the Start VM on Connect service that's going to turn the VM off. If the user goes to Start and clicks Shutdown, that'll turn Windows off, but the VM itself will still be running and you'll be paying for it. So the only way to stop that meter from turning is to deallocate the VM. And thankfully, there are other solutions in the cloud that already do this. So I'll be walking you through a solution that will stop the VM automatically for you. And then Start VM on Connect will still give the user flexibility to turn the machine on when they need it. And at the point of recording this video, this new feature is in the public preview. And I know the WVD product team would love your feedback. And so in the description down below, I'll have a link to Tech Community where you can post some of that feedback or just give me a comment down below and I'll be sure that the product team gets that. And since this is in the public preview, there are a few limitations to keep in mind. First is that this feature only applies today to personal host pools. And that personal host pool could be configured either for automatic or direct assignment. So either one will work, but there is no support currently for pooled host pools. That's your remote desktops or remote applications. So this is gonna be really quick and easy to get set up. Let's jump over to the Azure portal and implement Start VM on Connect. If you wanna master the Azure cloud, you can start right now by clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. So here I've got the Windows WVD client and support right now is only for the Windows client or the HTML5 web client. So just keep that in mind. I've already got my host pool set up as you can see in the background and let's just start a session with our personal desktop and see what happens. And when we do, we get a message saying that we could not log you on because there aren't any resources available. So let's take a look in the Azure portal and see what's going on. And you can see right away over here that we have a unavailable host and we do only have one host in this pool. So if we go to the very left under session hosts, there we can confirm that our virtual machine is unavailable. Now you can get to your VM just by clicking on the name. And this is the summary screen for everything going on with this virtual machine. And over there on the left, just click the name again and that'll take you to the VM blade, and there's the answer why there are no resources available, the VM is turned off. And Start VM is gonna help us fix that. So let's go back to the host pool, and on the left we've gone into the host pool properties, and here in this bottom section where the configuration is, notice that we have our assignment type as direct, but it could be automatic just as well. And then right under that is the radio button for Start VM on Connect. So let's flip that to on, and then go ahead and hit save at the top. Now that enables the feature within this host pool, but there's a few other things to do. 
At the top search bar, let's type in subscriptions and then go ahead and click that. Select the particular subscription where your host pool is located. And then over on the left, we wanna to go to access control I am. And then at the top, we wanna to click the add button and then just click add custom role. And what we're doing here is creating a role that's going to have the specific permissions that the WBD service will need in order to turn on the VM for us. Now, if you've never created a custom role before, it's not too difficult to do, and I've even made the process simpler for you. So I'll open up another tab in my browser and go out to my GitHub, and I will have this link in the video description below, so that makes it easier for you. And here we have all the details needed to make that custom role. And it's going to have two basic permissions. One is to read virtual machines, and the other is to start virtual machines. And the easiest way you can add this into your Azure environment is with this raw button right here. So go ahead and click that. And then in your browser's address bar, just copy the entire URL and then go back to the Azure portal. And then you wanna select this third radio button, start from JSON. And then you've got a blue box right over here so that you can pick a file, go ahead and click that. And then in this line for the file name, go ahead and paste the URL right in there and click open. And that should have preloaded everything that you need in order to finish this process. But just so you can see what's here, go ahead and click next. And there are the two permissions that we're granting, like I said before, start action and VM read and hit next again. And now we have to set what's called an assignable scope. This is where this role is going to be available. So you wanna hit this add assignable scope button. And now we get this picker over here with our subscription and every resource group in that subscription. So now the question is, where should you create this role? Well, if all of your WVD resources are in one resource group and only one resource group from now until the end of forever, go ahead and select the resource group. If, however, your WVD resources are spread over multiple resource groups, select the subscription. So in my case, I'll select the subscription. And when you've selected everything appropriately, hit the add button at the bottom. And now we've got that scope finished. Let's hit next. And there you can see the same JSON that we pulled out of the GitHub and go ahead and hit the review and create button. And there's the summary of what we're gonna do and the scope that you're going to add it to and hit create. And in just a second, that'll finish and you should have this banner at the top that you successfully created a custom role. Hit OK. So now we have to grant the permissions for the custom role we just created. And if for you that was at a resource group level, go ahead to your resource group now and back to access control. But since mine is at the subscription level, I can do it right here. So go ahead and hit add again, and this time add a role assignment. And now you'll get the picker showing up right over here. And at the top, you wanna select the role dropdown. And now you can search for the particular role. And if you're using the one from my JSON file, just type in the word start, and that'll filter it down for you to desktop virtualization, start VM on connect. And now that we have the role selected, we need to decide who we're assigning this to. In this case, it's going to be the WVD service. So in this search bar, type in Windows Virtual Desktop, and you might have several entries like I do. So you want the one that only says Windows Virtual Desktop. And once you've added that at the bottom, go ahead and click save. And just to verify, you can go to the role assignments tab and you can see down here in the middle, we've got desktop virtualization start VM on connect assigned to the Windows Virtual Desktop service. So now I've gone to the resource group where my particular host pool and VM is located and I'll go back to access control. And then I've gone back to role assignments and there it is, start VM on connect, assigned to the Windows Virtual Desktop service and it's inherited from the subscription scope. And so now that we have start VM connect enabled on our host pool and we have the right permissions for the service to do its job, let's test it. So we're back in the client and I'll just double click on the session desktop. And if I zoom in, you can see it says starting remote PC. Now, how long should this take? Well, it's as long as it takes the virtual machine to start, have the WVD agents start up and report back to the service that it can accept the connection and then complete your entry into the environment. And there is also a timeout on this process in case something happens to go wrong. So this will take a maximum of five minutes. 
the message has now changed to say waiting for remote PC, which is your indication that the VM has powered on and we're waiting for the agents to respond and finish the connection process. And we're getting now the securing remote connections and we are on the desktop. So great job, everybody. Start VM on Connect works. That's part one of this particular session. The next part is going to be how do we manage the users in the environment? We have several group policies that are gonna help us here. And the first one is around screen security. Now I've done it, you've done it. We've all stepped away from our computers without locking them. This can be a security concern because folks can be allowed to use WVD from anywhere, like public coffee shops or the local library, as well as working from home. So it's always a best practice to lock your computer when you step away, even for a few minutes. And we have four group policies that are gonna to work together to help take care of this. In your group policy management console, go ahead and open your WVD policy if you have one. If not, just create a new one. Navigate to the user policies, administrative templates, control panel, personalization, and then in there, you want to select enable screen saver and enable that policy. The next one is to force a specific screen saver. And the one that I like to use here is the 3D text screen saver because it's pretty simple. But you can select any screen saver you want as long as it's on all of your virtual machines. The third policy you'll find here is one that will protect the screensaver. This is gonna enforce a password before that screensaver can be turned off and the user logged back in. And finally, there is a policy to prevent changing the screensaver and that's so users can't disable this function. So that'll handle all of the security around your screens for your sessions, but let's take a look at computer policies next. And there are four policies here as well. Under computer, go to your policies, and then open Windows settings, administrative templates, Windows components, remote desktop services, remote desktop session hosts, and then session time limits. And the first policy here is to set time limit for active remote desktop services sessions. This is a hard limit for any session that is running. And once the time limit has been reached, the user will get a pop-up warning that gives them two minutes before they become disconnected. Now, if they happen to miss the message, no worries because their session won't be logged off. It'll still be active. They'll just be disconnected from it and they can simply log back in. Now, because of what this policy does, and the length of an average workday being generally eight hours. That's what I set my policy for. The next policy is just for remote applications. And this is called set time limit for log off of remote app sessions. And this policy will allow you to specify how long a user's remote app session will remain in a disconnected state. This is very useful because when a user closes their last WVD remote application, their session is still active on the VM. And because they never got logged out, they just closed the program, this will help their sessions log off of the machine. Now, how long you set this policy for will be up to you and how you run your environment. So it's kind of up to you here, but I set this for eight hours as a maximum as well. That way I'm sure nobody's going over the normal business hours. The third policy here is for users that are still logged on with an active session, but have become idle. Now, idle means that there is no user input. They're not typing anything, they're not moving the mouse, everything's just there. Now, this could imply that the user walked away, so we can set a time limit. Once the time limit is reached, the session will go from idle to disconnected. And the users will also get a two minute warning before any of that happens. So they can just hit a key on the keyboard or just move the mouse in order to keep their session alive. Now, once these policies have done their thing, all of these users who are idle will now be disconnected. So we have one final policy and that is called set up time limit for disconnected sessions. Once this limit is reached, 
those disconnected users will be logged off of their virtual machines. And with all of these group policies together, you'll be able to manage your users out of the WVD environment so we can do the next part, and that is deallocate the VM so you can save some money. And like I said at the beginning, there's nothing in the Start VM on Connect service that will do anything to stop your virtual machines. So what I'm gonna show you here is just features of Azure Virtual Machines, not WVD. Here in the Azure portal, I've gone to one of my virtual machines, and in the blade, you wanna scroll down till you get to the Operations section. In there, click Auto Shutdown. Here you can set a daily schedule to deallocate your VM at the end of your workday, like 6 p.m. And don't forget to set your time zone as well. And it's that simple. You can even deploy this as part of your ARM templates for your VMs. And this will power down your VMs at the same time every day, helping you to save money while still empowering your users with the Start VM on Connect feature so that they can log in whenever they need to. And all of this balanced by the group policies that we talked about that'll help manage the users in the environment, keep things secure, and help them out of the system when they don't log off properly. And remember, Start VM on Connect as of this recording is in preview, so we definitely want to hear feedback from you. So comment down below on what you think and how you would like to see this service improved so I can get that data off to the product team. And if you want to become a master of Windows Virtual Desktop, check out my AZ140 series, which will help you also prepare for the WVD Specialization Certification Test, which becomes available at the end of March 2021. Or you can check out the latest Azure Academy video right up here. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you in the next episode. Happy learning.